Hey everybody, welcome to this very special Whiskey Quickie. It's the one that everybody waits for at the end of the every year because it's the most highly anticipated release of the year, which is the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Yes, I've been waiting yes. 364 days. For this. <laughs> Actually, I have no idea when we did the last year's, but uh, <laughs> is this more anticipated? Probably more than Pappy for Whiskey Geeks. For I Whiskey think. Geeks, for sure. A lot of whiskey fans out there, they really go after the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection because a lot of this is the higher proof, uncut, unfiltered version of a lot of the everyday staples. So as we start going through here, we'll be going in a, a, a different kind of order. We'll be doing Saz 18, Eagle Rare 17, Thomas H. Handy, William R. Weather, and then making its return this year is George T. Stagg. So as we start going through here, I'll give you a little bit of information, but the first one we're going to try is Sazerac Rye. So this is the 18-year version of a quart, Saz 18. The barrels for this whiskey were filled in the spring of 2003 and 2004, and rested in warehouses K, M, and P, and it's bottled at 90 proof. All right. I should also mention that all of these have an SRP of only $100, but... Great value, if you can find <laughs> it. If you can find it. May the lottery gods be on your side. That's all I can say there. This is the probably the only one and only time I will get to try these, so... Uh, I'm with you on that one. Cheers, buddy. Yes. Till next you. year. Yeah. All right, on to the nose. Ooh, very sweet oak component. Yeah, it's very reminiscent of last year's, if I recall. There was only one year that it had almost like a bitterness, musty, funky taste to it, but this seems like it's back to its usual greatness. Oh, yeah. I, I just get that really vibrant sweet oak. There's a little bit of creaminess on it. Um, a little bit of like maybe plum or fruit, some like some kind of plummy fruit. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. I still get like a good, like almost like a dustiness, like a dusty yeah. taste or dusty funk that you would get on it. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm liking it. It's different. It's like creamy, then it opens up the biking spices, but then it opened. It's weird how it's transitioning. It's like got this like really sugary grape component towards the, like the mid and back palate, whereas it kind of starts creamy, then spicy, then kind of sweet. I don't know. It's kind of different. <laughs> yeah. My first, my first initial take on it was there was a little bit of heat, but that's probably because it's the first one of the bunch we're going into at 90 proof, but that dissipated really quickly. I definitely got more of that sweet oak notes, a little more oak characteristic. The finish kind of fell really flat yeah. towards the back for me though, but it, that's that's where it kind of just tasted a little bit more like I just want to say oak water, but sweeter oak water. Yeah, it's weird. It's it's definitely more spicier on the front and mid palate, and kind of transition to like a softer, fruitier notes in the back. Whereas normally you build up fruitier and build up to spiciness. It's kind of reverse order for some reason, but no. it's still very good. It's still good. It's still yeah. good. And the, the second taste I had right there, a little bit more flavor on the back end, not as big as a flat finish, but still doesn't linger around or anything like that. Yeah. Still very good for a hundred dollars. <laughs> for a hundred dollars. For a hundred dollars. Great. Yep. But let's go ahead and rate it on the nose where you at. Thumbs up. I really liked it. I really I liked thought it was it. good too. Yeah. And the taste? Thumbs up. There's some good great flavors there. And the finish? Well, I'm gonna go sideways. Hard you know, sideways. It's, yeah, it's kinda muted, kinda really falls flat. Um definitely with a rye, you know, I want bigger, bolder, spicier, more lost lasting finish for me. Yep. Well, stick with us. Eagle Air 17 coming up next. All right, here we are, Eagle Rare 17 time. We had a chance to kind of reset everything. So this one, the, the information is pretty much right out there in front of you already. So 17 years old. This one is also 101 proof, which that changed, I think it was three years ago is when they started putting it at 101 proof. Before then, it was always 90 proof. So we've always been a bigger fan of the 101. Yeah, it seems like since they moved it to that, it's been stellar. Obviously, it's going to be yep. better. These were distilled in the spring of 2005, and they were aged in warehouses H, K, and L. H, K, L. Hmm. All right. M -O -P. Well, last time I was there, there was a ton of these in that uh, the last drop uh, vault. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. Just what, Igor 17 barrels? Bottles? I think the barrels. Not barrels. the bottles, the oh, barrels. The barrels. Oh, I think okay. they put them in there to kind of slow down the aging once it gets like to a certain point. To that point? Yeah. All right. So on with the nose here. Mm. I like this more than the Saz 18, I think. 
Yeah, this is right in your wheelhouse. It's, um, uh, it's, it has more of those, those typical Buffalo Trace notes of being that, that like really big cherry note, yep. uh, cordial cherry that you like to say. I think that really stands out in there. Yeah, that creamy, very pronounced creamy cor cherry cordial note, some chocolate, um, but also too some like nice uh, fall kind of spices in there too in the, the nose as well. Yeah, I get it's a, like a Werther's Original on there on the nose. Hmm. I'm not getting that no. yet, but just the, the traditional caramel vanilla. I think you're eating a butterscotch. For <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> One of those bullseyes. Yeah. All right. On the taste here. Mm. Oh, wow. That is, that is creamy, viscous, like, but delicate. <laughs> like there's that sweet oat component. Um, it's just really rich. Brown sugar. There's cherry, there's... I mean... There's... I don't want to go around the flavor wheel, but there's a there's, lot of flavors. There's no pepper in there. I'll, no. I'll tell you that. But you're right. That viscosity really comes in because yeah. it coats and it stays. Yeah. It's not like a lingering finish where, you know, you have like this spiciness character that trails on. It's like if you just had... Like, say you put maple syrup in your mouth and you just like... Yeah. Went like that for a little bit. Like it's, it's just how the, you see it on the bottle just slowly make its way down. Mm -hmm. Yep. It really does. It just coats the tongue right there and just a lot of great flavors out of it. All right. Let's rate it on the nose. Thumbs up. I really right. liked it. And the taste. Thumbs up. Really liked it. And the finish. Thumbs up. Yeah. Really good. This one was a triple home run right there. I feel like ever since they moved it to that 101, they've all been like stellar. I agree. Yep. Well, stick with us. We're going to head to the barrel proof next and we're going to go with Thomas H. Handy. All right, here we go. Thomas H. Handy, who is uh, the H stands for, actually, I don't remember what it stands for, but uh, Hilbert. <laughs> I don't know. I do remember that we had a, an episode, I think it was with Freddie Johnson. We talked about Thomas H. Handy and he gave the whole story behind it. So if you want to learn more about that, go and check out an episode we have with Freddie Johnson. He's a wealth of knowledge, as you all know that already. But Thomas H. Handy is the uncut, unfiltered version of what you know as baby Saz or Sazerac Rye that's always out there. And this year's Handy was distilled in the spring of 2016, making it six years old, aged in warehouses I, L, and M, and comes in at 130.9 proof. And that's the highest proof since 2012. I remember last year's Handy really surprising us. It, it was, was one of the like, better ones yeah, out of the lot. It was really good. Um, I'm always interested they include this one into the batch, you know, compared to all the others, because those are all double digit. Um, I guess it'd be interesting if, I know everybody wants an Elmer in there, but what if uh, what if the benchmark makes it in there? <laughs> benchmark? I don't know what you're... I mean, they only have three recipes. Right. So it's going to be three recipes and yeah, taken from sense. different things. So if you were to take a higher age on this one, it would just be barrel proof size 18. Fair enough. Or maybe you make it 10 year or maybe something. I don't know. Yeah. But I didn't think it through when I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just poking holes in the theory over here. So I want the nose. Uh, it's kind of minty. Yeah, I, I can see that. A little bit clove. Yeah, this is hitting all the standard rye check boxes. Mm -hmm. Spearmint, some lemon. Oh, I got the lemon on there. A little yeah. zestiness. And then just a ton of baking spices on there. Yep, totally agree. All right, on to the taste. It's a punchy rye. It's a very punchy rye. Um, cinnamon bomb, like red hot candy, but there's a ton of spearmint in there. Really don't get that lemony kind of too much. Maybe a little bit on the finish, but there's some more like piney kind of notes. Mm -hmm. Like um, Make you feel like you're in Colorado. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is, this to, to me, tastes more like a 95.5 rye. I don't think, I think they use more of a like Kentucky rye, 50 percent more rye this is definitely more of a 95.5 rye profile for me you would think it hit that i think some like hard candy elements in there i don't know if you remember like your grandma's candy bowl there's definitely some flavors in there where you just have some as ryan said a little bit of cinnamon into it but just some of those kind of like yeah. denser flavors that you get out of it as well yeah just kind of rich sugary candy flavors yeah yep. all right on the nose how are you gonna rate it mm, sideways for me i'd say so it's, yeah on the taste 
Mm, sideways. Ooh, for me. I might have gone thumbs up a little. Yeah, bit. but it's it's just different compared to all the other ones. Right. If this was not BTAC, it might be it, it, a, it, be a thumbs up. Right. That's true. I'll go thumbs. Up. <laughs> Sorry. And the finish. Uh, thumbs up. I actually like the finish. It's got a good, nice lingering spice. That sweetness actually sits there on the palate that you were talking about with the rock candies. It really sits on the back end for me. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a one I probably need to sit with a little bit more, but uh, it's a it's a good ride. Yep, solid. And next, we'll be hitting some of the crowd favorites here. Stay tuned. Here we go, everybody. One of the crowd favorites. People chase after it every year. They talk about it like it's the nectar of the gods and they love William Lou Weller and hey, uh, usually they're right <laughs> maybe they're right but you know it, it holds the W.O. Weller label which everybody kind of knows that's the same weeded recipe that makes everything from Pappy Van Winkle nowadays so I'd say that we're getting into barrel proof Pappy but really uh, we're getting the bar- barrel proof Weller green label <laughs> <laughs> or is it barrel proof Weller 12 maybe that's what it is because these were all distilled in the spring of 2010 making them 12 years old. And so these are also aged in warehouses C, K, and N, and this also comes in at 124.7 proof. All right. Which is, I think, on the lower end of some of these that they've been, if I'm not mm. mistaken. I feel like last year was a lot lower. lower. I can't remember. I mean, if you're entering around 120, 125. Ooh. No. All right, on the nose here. Ooh, I'm liking that. Well, that's a... <laughs> that's a you remember when I talked about Eagle R17 having that cherry cord? This is this like is a... elevated. It's, I mean, it's... This it, is more cherry blossom. Like. I was, I was going to say it's like the Luxardo cherry juice. Like, it's just so yeah. concentrated and thick. Right. And that brainy barrel. Yeah. But there's definitely... There's some oak, strong oak. I was about to say, the here. oak there is really coming through, and that, which I really like. Yeah, this is... Ooh, this is great. Make a candle. If you can. Yankee, you start listening up. Yeah, that's a that's a great nose. All right, on to the taste. Mm. Got that nice viscosity. Um, it's definitely kind of more. There's cherry, but it kind of moves into like a cherry cola. Like, um, like to me, like where it's kind of more like a, you know, you get that strong acid carbonation kind of towards the back yeah. of a cola I i'm really getting that. that here so it's like almost like moving into like a cinnamon kind of flavor um, as bad as it sounds like i still feel that there's that that dimetap sort of flavor going on there it, you get that sort of medicinal cherry note out of it yeah but i don't know like i said the the flavor is good it just has that overwhelming medicinal cherry note for me but that's just me yeah i can see that it's um it's definitely not as soft and like you know, usually with these, they're very, like, balanced. It's very kind of more, I don't want to say harsh, but it's definitely strong in a way that, I don't know. <laughs> well, let's just rate it and see what we come out with yeah. here. So, on the nose, where are you at? I thumbs up. I, I thumbs love up. the nose. I think thumbs up is yeah. good. And the taste? I hate to do it, but I'm going to go sideways. This is normally here. my favorite, but there's just some things that I'm not loving about it. It just it just wasn't all the way there for the flavor for me. I mean, yeah. there's years where it's great. There's years that it's like this. I yeah. mean, it's still good. Don't get me wrong. It's still great. But it's when you were trying to rank everything in BTAC world, it kind of has to hit on all cylinders. Yep. And the finish. Kind of sideways, too. I mean, sideways to mid-thumbs for me. Yeah, there's yeah. like a cinnamon kind of flavor. Normally, I'm used to like that cherry cordial chocolate ice cream with Weller's product and... Uh, and that nice sweet oak component. This one's just like a little off balance for me. So I can see it. Yep. Right Maybe there with it's you. just a little too high proof or something. I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know. Well, the suspense is building because Stag is next. Ooh. So stick around. All right, here we are. The grand finale. What I've been waiting for for over a year because it wasn't in last year's lineup. And that is George T. Stag. This is always my favorite. So I really hope that it lives up to the expectation. And so this year, they're happy to report that these were coming from 2007 barrels. And that means that they are 15 years and five months old. Hmm. Yep. And, uh, so and last year's would have been 14. It would have been, <laughs> I guess so. Um, and the proof on this one is 138.7 proof. Oh, boy. Which is the highest. It's one of the higher ones it's 
uh, seen since then, I think around 2012 as well. So, well, let's see if that extra year was worth it. Yes, yes, let's go ahead. I mean, what do you think they did with all the barrels that didn't make the cut last year? You think this this run is just going to be massive? If there's just going to be stags everywhere? No. Or you think they just held it back and it's going to be a. Yeah, it's well, probably stag, but because they dropped stag junior for stag, right? Huh? No, stag junior is still around. Oh. Still I thought they for... topped a junior. We, p- we picked a stag, stag junior bear, bear this know. year. <laughs> At least I was there for it. But let's go ahead. Let's dive in with the nose here. Good oak. Yep. Def- like a... Definitely get a. Uh, alcohol vapor on the on the nose though, which yeah, one hundred and thirty eight point like, seven. For me, I'm getting like burnt orange, almost like almost like a an old fashioned kind of thing going where you got like the bitters and the the orange peel, the sugar. Like I'm kind of getting like those Angostura bitter notes. I can like, see that. Um, I enjoy that too. I mean, no, no, right. there's, definitely, there's yeah. definitely like a like if you were to take the Remember when they, they take the orange peel and they light it on fire and they right. twist it and they throw it? Yep. A little bit like that going on there. All right. On the taste. Oh, boy. Mm. That's rich. I can feel it in my nostrils. <laughs> really? I mean. For me, I think it's like kind of creamy and not overpowering for the proof. Well, I mean. There was just a really good explosion of spice and flavor and everything that you would want out of a big barrel proof whiskey because it had and it had some cinnamon it had the oak component good sweet oak it had uh some baking spices you you would say not a ton of fruit by any means it's a bunch of those darker components yeah. it's 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 uh you know leather and tobacco and stuff like that yeah and there's definitely like I'm getting, I'm getting to like this, you know, you get those chocolate candies that have like different components in them. And it's like each time you drink, you, you like know, a Godiva you, box or whatever, right, or, you, know, yeah. like, you know, Forrest is like, you never know which one you're going to get. That's what you're, I'm kind of getting with this. It's like, there's like these, every time I take a bite, there's some like rich, sweet component to it. You're right. Cause I just took a second drink and it's like, it was, what if, if I would have picked one out? And I would have been into it in a chocolate, but has a strawberry cream inside of it. Right. Like, that's what I'm getting into it. And then the next time you go and you're like, oh, there's hazelnut. <laughs> oh, I can, I can and see that. the next that. one you're like, well, there's just vanilla. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good things going on here for me. Let's rank it. Yep. So on the nose, where are you at? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I like it. Taste? Thumbs, Thumbs up. up. Finish? Thumbs up. Yep. Yeah. This one's, I'm glad they waited. It was worth the wait. It was worth the wait. But let's go ahead and figure out what is your favorite, if you had to choose one, out of this year's collection. So if, let's, say, let's say Joe and Susie out there, they get their phone call from their local, and they say, hey, we got one bottle here for you. We got, we got, we got one of each, but you can only choose one. Which one are we going to recommend to them? Oh, before I had the stag, I would have said <laughs> Eagle Rare, but I'm going stag. This one's like really, really good. Yeah, I'm. It's in on board with that too. I think the Saz is a great. Yeah, the offering. Saz is really good too. And that's, but it's so different. It's so different compared to George T. Stag because it is. It's gonna be the lower proof. It has this more dustiness, funkiness to it, and it's a it's a very unique pour versus Stag. It's fantastic. It's great. It's a barrel proof pour. But you might find something similar to this when you look at barrel proof stuff from a lot of different distilleries, right? Uh, versus the Saz 18, which is a completely unique profile. I would same, agree with that. Same thing with the Eagle Rare 17. I think the Saz and the Eagle Rare kind of have this a very similar kind of fun taste to it, versus the Stag is just being to some big boldy or yep. big bold kind of you know really, flavor explosion. Yeah, really. I think it's it's hard to choose, but for me, I'm also I'm. I've always been a big fan of stag, so I have to go with you, sir, stag. It's it's back, so I have to take it. Yep. There you go, stag. Good job. Yep. And that is going to be our review of the 2022 Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Until next year. <laughs> 300, 364 more days until next year's BTAC be- be- collection. <laughs> yep. All right. Cheers, y'all. We'll see you next time. Toodles.